What's up, Tricksters, members of the BBC Club? My name is Charlotte, and the one and only 14 times Radiant player and dominatrix of ranked solo queue in Valorant. Welcome to the second part of the PewDiePie WOD review, where I'm teaching you how to play Omen on Asensio and helping Pewds escape gold elo hell with Radiant strategies, tips, and tricks. Before the video starts, please make sure to subscribe, it helps me a lot. Turn on the notification so you don't miss any new content from me, leave a like and follow me on twitch.tv forward slash charlatan for some daily Valorant grind. On my Discord server you can get coached by me and hang out with this amazing community. Enjoy in this video, my dear friends. Uh, in this round, once again, I don't know what uh, what is happening with you, PewDiePie man. Heavy Shield and Vandal was a great option. And you have two smokes, but afford the rest of your utility. Like your utility might help you with entering the bomb sites and winning the round. Where's the teleport? Where's the paranoia? We must have that in our pockets. Whenever you're playing in a Valorant ranked solo queue, uh, you always want either to carry the spike or follow the person that has the spike in a solo queue match. And always play around the allies that are in higher danger of death than other allies, if that makes sense. So when you're playing some kind of a default strategy, like you're holding A main or B main area of the map, uh, you never want to be the person holding those areas of the map. Like if you're playing Ascent and one ally is holding A main and one ally is holding the B main area of the map, uh, you always... Uh, want to be the person that is playing around the mid, most likely your allies in mid are gonna die first. Whenever you're using the ominous utility, like never use it in an open space, like not never but 80% of the times, if you have an option to hide behind, to hide behind some wall, always hide behind that wall and then use the omens utility. I mean especially if you're using like the smoke like you did right now. And PewDiePie, when you're falling back, like uh, uh, from a position like from the bomb sites or right now you're you're going from this uh, middling position here into the b main area behind you always place your crosshair where the enemies might be at that moment of time right now enemies can penetrate your butthole as you're going to the b main area right here and you could have died like a potato uh, when you're planting the bomb on b site you always want to plant it at the front of the site uh, simply because your allies that are playing in a B boat house or in market can penetrate that bomb like with a smart ping through this uh, boat area here. And uh, when you plant the bomb on B site, you never ever in your life want to play the boat house where you are right now, the back of the B site. Basically, uh, this area is the suicide area of the map. Uh, the enemies can easily kill you like with uh, utility, with uh, molotovs, flashes, nades, they can split you apart. Very bad area of the map. The best position to play in a postman situation is top of the site, these little boxes right here. You can teleport to them or you can jump to them. Uh, from here and basically taking this off angle to kill the enemies in stairs or this off angle to kill the enemies on speedway If the enemies are pushing you in the same time You can always take the cover for your ass from one area of the map and you can focus on the other area of the map Like onto the enemies anyways This is a great off angle to hold the post plant and to support your allies on both left side and right side When the enemies are pushing you in a post plant scenario now It really doesn't matter because your allies are being a bit more aggressive and what you should do right now Instead of looking at your minimap and waiting to support your allies with your smoke You should be there with your allies Helping them out in the B main area market and playing with them never like leave your allies uh, to do some random shit try to use their lives as much as possible like try to follow them even if they're doing some stupid aggression like try to try to think how can you use your teammates to basically uh, win that round to refrag them to get the information where the enemies are etc etc in the first three four rounds basically you want to read where the enemies are playing where they're placing their utility and how can you breach 
into the bomb sites of the enemies. This was a very bad switch that you did, like Odin is not a good weapon. Trust me, Odin is only good weapon right now because you're playing against the people that don't have the hands and legs. And uh, once you stop playing ag against the crab nation, uh, you're gonna witness a lot of headshots and uh, the things are gonna quickly gonna start falling apart for you with the Odin. So here you should have stayed like with a with a phantom and as soon as you see that your allies have the trouble like entering a site or b site uh, always opt in for the aggressive play do the aggressive execute the aggressive strategies like smoke the generator smoke the boxes or the right uh, get um, into the face of the enemies like uh, use your smokes in a creative way uh, that that, that uh, top smoke was actually pretty close to the small that I would be doing and also this wall that the sage did is one of the worst walls that you can do on a site and you should tell your sage to stop doing this wall because this wall will only fuck you and your allies in the anal cavity and we don't want that we want our asses to be clean and nice here you don't need to be hasty when planting the bombs in Valorant like you never know when when the enemy phoenix is gonna peek you like through this smoke and try to kill you you should have just waited a bit more to see uh, what the enemies are gonna do, where they're gonna peek you from, and just to be, uh, in general, a bit more patient, but uh, I don't know, like, if the phoenix is gonna push now or not, but yeah. Like, uh, planting the bomb immediately as you get the bomb site is not your highest priority, like, uh, you can plant the bomb, like, at four seconds at the end of the round, like, it's totally fine. Clearing the site and uh, uh, basically living a happy life uh, after you plant the bomb is much more important than planting the actual spike once again like this move that you're doing here in the speedway area so this area of the map here is absolutely bad uh, because right now what you did with those two smokes you just provided enemies an opportunity to completely fuck you up on the b-bomb site like uh, you're giving them a lot more angles to work around uh, they can play inside of your smokes and completely uh, annihilate you like uh, this smoke setup is a big no-no and me no comprehendo. If you know that the killjoy is playing B site, uh, use the aggressive execute that I showcased you. Just uh, enter the stairs area on the right side or left side with your shrouded steps and try to support your allies in that type of way and engage the enemies. It is really good that he's holding the spike and uh, playing around the spike. That is really good. I don't know who taught you this smoke like on top of the generator. That person should be sent to the gulag. Uh, I, I, I really thought in this round that I'm gonna see some kind of an aggressive execute, but uh, I don't know, Th these smokes that you're doing only help the enemies, like they only help the enemies, they don't provide any any opportunity for you or your allies, and that is why you should stop doing them, like uh, uh, the smokes need to be very thoughtful, they need to block a certain vision of the enemies, uh, uh, and they cannot provide additional angles and corners from which the enemies can peek you, and also your smoke should not split your allies apart. When your allies are pushing mid only from this mid link, always smoke the area of the map which your allies are gonna engage the first. So this smoke here in a short area was muy bien, no? Mi lave! And the secondary smoke was in mid, also very good. Uh, when you have the Sova in your team, you can also do this smoke a bit deeper, like here, around the pizza area, and then you can tell your Sova to recondart the front of the mid here, like this middling area here, and then you can reveal the enemies in this position, penetrate them to the wall, and push them completely back towards the market and CT area of the map. I don't know, like, they're just waiting for the pushes of the enemies, that's totally fine, like, PewDiePie is once again, like, holding the spike, but he should be going in, in a mid area anyways, like, to support this jet and play with her. But before, like, going to the mid area here, it would be much better if you drop the spike to the Sage, because right now you, you're in a much higher danger than your Sage. Like, right now you can easily die from this enemy and lose the spike, which you actually do. Now, we're seeing some kind of uh, default execute on B site. Uh, PewDiePie, uh, very good smoke in a CT. Could be a bit better, but I love I love to see there. And extremely, extremely bad smoke in a market area. Why is it bad? You provide enemies a lot more opportunity. The enemies can play here and peek you from this position. Enemies can play inside of the smoke and then drop and maybe peek you and kill you. Enemies can play this angle and peek you from this position. Extremely bad. But if you give the enemies this smoke, they can only peek you from this area of the map. And when they are peeking you through this smoke, they are always in a disadvantage compared to you. Because here you don't see, like uh, they don't see you at all, but you see the enemies in the middle of the smoke. When using the Omen Ultimate, 
uh, on the attacker side. There are three rules of using the Omen Ultimate. Uh, number one rule is there are some specific strategies that I teach in coaching sessions, and there are some specific like uh, ways in which you should be using the Omen Ultimate, like on the attacker side. But on Ascent, we don't have any like specific strategies for Omen. Uh, the second rule is we're using the Omen Ultimate to gather the information on the attacker side where the enemies are on the bomb site. So basically using the Omen ultimate on top of the generator to put the pressure onto the enemies and get the intel where the enemies are. We can also cancel the ultimate if we see the enemies looking at us and go back and we put an enormous amount of pressure onto the enemies. Third way of using Omen ultimate on the attacker side, a fast rotation tool between the sites when you want to plant the bomb on the opposite bomb site where you think the enemies are not playing at that moment of time. And the fourth usage of the Omen ultimate, making the sandwich out of the enemies uh, when your allies are pushing the site. So basically, right now, he's trying to use the ultimate in a B-boat house, but before using that ultimate, we are doing the smoke here, smoke here, flashing our allies from this position into the stairs and boat house, and then, when our allies are in the speedway here, we, we are using then the ultimate in a B-boat house and making the sandwich out of the enemies. If we use it before, our allies are in a speedway, the enemies are just gonna destroy the shadow and we didn't make any pressure onto the enemies. Or uh, if uh, we fully teleport and our allies are not here to support us, the enemy can be maybe somewhere on the site waiting for us to teleport and then our head is gonna fly away from our shoulders. One thing that I consistently love about uh, his gameplay is that uh, he's always carrying the spike. Like that is extremely good, he's playing around the bomb and uh, he is not allowing the enemies to kill the spike on one area of the map and then uh, while he's taking the opposite area of the map. Like, uh, that is completely dumb and stupid. By the way, PewDiePie, if you want to improve your reaction time, you can use my AimLab Extreme playlist on aimlab.pros forward slash charlatan. I'm not sponsored anymore, but uh, still, we, we, we all love the AimLab. We all love to click heads, so why not? And you can also get my coaching on Discord server. <laughs> <laughs> you play with Papito and we, we make the best team ever. We, we, we make out of this man the, the Radiant player. This smoke setup that he's doing on A side is very good. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is that uh, this smoke positioning must be just a bit better. Like it must be like more to the right side to cover this whole lower area here and everything is muy bien. And I want to see some paranoia being used like uh, when you're pushing the sites like paranoia the generator area or some position where you think the enemies are. Like uh, that is just something that you do like when you're executing the sites with, as, as an omen player like to clear as many angles as possible, cover as many uh, positions as possible for your allies from which they can get picked by the enemies and entering the site together with them. This push was one of the best pushes in this WOD, like uh, together with his Sova, supporting him with the utility, like almost everything was perfect. Here in this round, we can see some smoke in the mid, like that smoke is pretty decent, like to push this area of the map, uh, to cover up yourself and your allies if you're pushing to the market. And that is how you should be smoking like the mid area with Omen when pushing towards the B site. Uh, one thing that uh, we can see uh, when it comes to PewDiePie's crosser placement is that he has a bit of a bobbly uh, aim. Like, uh, you can see that his aim is going up and down, he doesn't really understand the verticality of the positions, uh, and uh, that is something that should be fixed like in a custom server, in a death matches, and uh, with a bit more like uh, in-depth practices. But, yeah. And also this shooting technique that he is implementing is called a uh, uh, Gorilla Jungle shooting technique. He should have went for burst fires or, or a full spray control like uh, this. Tr -tr 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 like if you're already going, tr -tr -tr -tr, you need to make a bit more pauses. Like you cannot, uh, like when you're burst firing the enemies, you don't do this like. You go. So you wait for your recall of that burst fire to be reset a bit. The pause between the burst fires must be a bit longer and stop moving while shooting. So I go right, I burst fire, I go left, stop, burst fire. Right, stop, burst fire, left, stop, burst fire. That is literally killing your uh, accuracy of your aim. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are on a defender side of Ascent, and we are at the first round. As I explained to you on the attacker side, we had a very specific strategy that you should do on Ascent when you're playing the first round. On defender side, the story is still the same. Basically, on Ascent, the A side is a bit harder for the retake than the B side. And in a first round, you should always think up some kind of a baiting strategy or some kind of a way to F up the people on a defender side in a first round this first round is very important for you and you should really try hard to win it as much as possible because like uh, your teammates mentality purely depends on winning the rounds especially those first ones and if you lose the first round maybe you're gonna have a hell of a time coming back in valorant because your teammates might just purely give up and they don't give a shit anymore and they're like ah, fuck this anymore like you know how fragile the mentality of people in Valorant are basically like uh, just one small mistake and you're already done it is really good that you PewDiePie is playing like uh, on the uh, A side in this round one thing that happened unfortunately in this specific world is that he is left without one player one player left this uh, gold elo match and now he is left four versus five against the enemies in that case scenario what Pewds should have done, he should have just simply bought a Sheriff and played a Sheriff and Light Shield. So whenever your teammate leaves and you're playing the first round, just buy a Sheriff and Light Shield and try to clutch round with, with those weapons. Because we already have the smokes uh, uh, and uh, there is no need to buy any other utility. Uh, now it is a really hard situation for PewDiePie because like uh, one teammate left and... Uh, like the whole defender side of Valorant is being played on your ability to take an easy frag onto the enemies together with your allies, like to think up some kind of a double bait setup or some kind of a double tower setup to take an easy kill onto the enemies and then play off from that numbers advantage. But right now they are constantly in a numbers disadvantage, unfortunately. Now, when you're playing Ascent, my friends, on Ascent, like, the main logic of the map is that uh, playing with your allies is much more valuable than playing alone. And that is what you should be doing. Like, uh, in A main and B main area of the map, you should try to think up some kind of a strategies to get the early information if the enemies are pushing the A site or B site. And based on that information, you should position somewhere together with your allies to defend that specific area of the map. Or you should immediately rotate to opposite part of the map where the enemies are at that moment of time. So basically, Ascent and Split are the maps on which you should be a bit lighter on your rotations because both bomb sites are fairly easy for the retake. And also, th those are the only two maps where you can immediately get at the start of the round information if the enemies are going A site or B site because both a main and b main area are pretty narrow and it is really easy to get that intel uh, about the enemies right now they're left like in a two versus five scenario and in my opinion they should definitely like uh, either save those weapons or simply try to play together we can see pewdiepie and soa making a crucial mistake here now you're two versus five and basically like uh, it really doesn't matter what you do right now like it's pretty hard to clutch this round but it was much better option if PewDiePie simply played with his Sova and tried to take uh, some exit frags or some kills that will impact the future rounds. Because right now he's just... Uh, they're playing way too far away and the enemies can easily kill them like uh, alone and that is something that you should never allow in a solo queue environment. We can see that PewDiePie completely doesn't give a fuck what his Sova is doing but he should be waiting for the Sova at this moment of time so they can play together and try to do something like uh, you cannot fight one versus five like uh, in, in this type of a scenario like if you already want to try to win this round simply play together try to take some double peeks onto the enemies try to fight them together and not split apart it's really good that he took here here like uh, the way that he was shooting with a ghost is not the most optimal way like he should be trying to go for the one taps and headshots but he just played down the enemy because he had a light shield with a ghost so that is also totally fine once again we can see here that pewdiepie completely hates playing with his ally like pewdiepie 
Putes, man, listen, listen, listen! You are not strong enough to kill five enemies every single round. Use your allies, use their lives to your advantage. Bait them, but be close enough uh, to them so that you can refrag them and play together with them. Uh, don't split apart from your teammates too often. That is the most common mistake that I see in every single elo that I play in. And then what you do, you allow me to take an easy clutch and an easy round. For example, if three enemies are playing against me, I'll try to split you apart and fight you one by one, like you're giving enemies an easy gunfight. What they did here, they killed two enemies, and instead of PewDiePie splitting away from the Sova, he should have been playing with the Sova and trying to retake the site together. Instead of that, he went into a mid area, he died alone, Sova died alone, and nobody could refrag anyone. They couldn't play two versus three or two versus one gunfights they just played three versus one at all times and that is very bad there are very small situations during a match when you should split apart from your teammates for example when your allies are already going together and there is no need for you to follow them and you want to do something unpredictable and to surprise the enemies or for an example when you are on the attacker side and you have planted the bomb and you're one versus three like you cannot really play passively because then the enemies are just gonna swarm you and kill you like a potato you need to be a bit more unpredictable split them apart be a bit more aggressive etc etc but here like you are two versus three against the enemies that have planted the bomb there's really nothing that you can do alone to to win this round like putes start playing more with your teammates and you'll find a lot more success in your games like try to observe the minimap a bit more like uh, try to see where your allies are positioned and try to position yourself better accordingly to what your allies are doing that is the one of the keys to success in Valorant. Like, I already mentioned a lot of keys to success. Like, there's a lot of different components when it comes to playing FPS games. Like, you need to understand that FPS games are like a chess plus, I don't know, soccer combined. Like, it is, it requires a lot of mechanical skill from you, but also it requires a lot of brain power from you. And brain power is something that you need to develop every single day on the next level. Like, there is a certain cap to your mechanical skill. Like, at one point, you're gonna become such so, so good mechanically that uh, your mechanical skill and your, like, uh, aim training, movement training won't matter anymore. Like, the improvement is gonna be so minor compared to how much you can expand your game knowledge, your focus, your overall like gameplay in any FPS game. And that is why gamers that use the brain are always better that, that use the raw power, because there is a certain limit to a raw power. Right now, PewDiePie has a lot of money uh, because their allies uh, left the game. And instead of buying the Ghost here with a heavy shield, PewDiePie should be buying the Spectre with a heavy shield and utility. There is absolutely no reason for you to save money here, especially when your allies buy. Like, if your allies don't want to follow the main rules of economy that you can see in the video right here, basically, uh, then you need to follow their economy. Like, if your allies are forcing, force with them. If your allies are saving, save with them. Because you don't want to play a solo game. Like, uh, you're not a one-man army. You are still a team, and if you cannot make any sense to your allies to do something, you unfortunately need to follow them and use them as best as you can. Right now, uh, on Ascent, when you're playing Omen or any smoker agent, uh, you always want to save the smokes for retake of the sites or for stopping the push of the enemies. One of the default smokes that I love to do, on Ascent specifically, is the smoke in the uh, midlink area, like this following all the smoke rules that I just uh, explained in the previous VODs. And basically, like, uh, this smoke uh, uh, protects your allies in the short area of the map, uh, in, and in the same time, kind of delays the enemy push, like, uh, through this mid-link area of the map right here. What I love to do when I'm playing a site or b site as a smoker agent, I usually save my smokes uh, when the enemies are engaging me in that bomb site. So for an example, I use the smokes to distort the map in my favor and to surprise the enemies. 
So when the enemies are pushing me onto the A side, and let's say I'm playing uh, very close to the enemies, like I'm I, unfortunately I found myself here with a phantom. Basically, you, you should never be playing these positions like close to the enemies when you're having a long range weapon. You should always play fr somewhere from sight or maybe jiggle picking the enemies here and trying to fight them there and then pulling back onto the bomb site on some good positions on A site. The scenario is I found myself here and the enemies are pushing me. I will always smoke the entrance, smoke the middle of the site here, and then I will be playing in between those two smokes to F up the enemies and to basically disorient them and surprise them. I can take the cover uh, with these smokes uh, if the enemies are flashing me or if they're using the drone or the solar recon dart. Uh, I can also flash my enemies out from this second smoke and I can push them when they are in between those two smokes and I can completely F them up or I can maybe even teleport behind the enemy lines like this and surprise them from inside of my second smoke there's a lot of different potentials that you can do when you're playing a smoker agent especially when you're playing omen you need to learn how to distort the map in your favor and how to create another a new opportunity for yourself and your teammates to f up the enemies that would be it for this part of the VOD. The final part will be released when we reach 1000 likes on this video and you know what you need to do. I'll be teaching you some additional radiant tricks to conquer Elo Hell in Valorant. Also leave down in the comments if you enjoyed this series and should we even continue it in future. Make sure to hit the subscribe, turn on the notifications, follow me on twitch.tv forward slash charlatan and join my official discord server if you want to get coached in Valorant or maybe to hang out with other tricksters as well. I'm yours one and only big brain of the tricksters community and thank you for watching.